the nutrient tank that I'm using, it's a 50 gallon low density polyethylene tank, uh, but I only fill it to about 30 gallons because the 30 gallons in the tank and 5 gallons in each of the seedling trays uh, give me 40 gallons of water that's circulating and that's enough water volume in order to keep my temperature, EC and pH stable for this particular setup. Um, now as far as the tank, you know, for the lid is just basically a piece of plastic that I have a little handle and a hook on so you can easily um, raise the lid and keep it open while you're doing your thing like cleaning it, dumping it, adjusting things or whatever. Um, and um, so the drain pipe from the NFC trays goes here and it has a little nylon mesh bag over it to keep the large particle particulates out you know like old roots and leaves and things like that and the same deal with the seedling tray it has a little bag over it and I don't have one now but I will for the tomato plants when the drain it drains here I'll have another bag over that as well so that way none of the extra uh, junk gets put back into the tank unnecessarily. I have a little float valve over here that keeps the, the proper height of the water and it automatically fills as it, as it goes down. What I also have is an inline uh, electric valve along with uh, uh, fl uh, basically a, a flow gauge and it also does accumulated gallons flown through it and what happens is, is uh, every once in a while, say whenever the tomato drippers come on, I have this valve also open, which would allow the float valve to fill the tank if its if the volume has dropped low enough. And the reason for that is so that way there's enough speed of the flow of the water so that way this gauge registers properly. Because if the flow is too slow, it's not enough to cause the impellers inside of the gauge to move accurately in order to register. So what I try to do is only have it come on a couple of times a day when the water level drops enough to where there's significant flow from the valve because if you can see if you just barely open it it's just a little trickle but as it goes down lower the water flows much at a much faster rate. And what's cool about this is you can actually reset it. So say you change your tank and you would reset the counter so that way you can actually see how much top off water you're putting into the tank over time and once the volume of the tank has been replaced a couple of times I would just dump, at, dump it out and start fresh so that way the nutrient balance state stays balanced uh, with all the elements. On this side we also have an inline filter that uh, goes from the pump that pumps the water to the NFT tables to the strawberries and also to the seedling trays and before it goes out to those, it uh, goes through this filter in order to catch any uh, finer particulates, like uh, even down to algae sized, so that way they don't make it out over there and clog things up unnecessarily. And every couple of weeks or so, I would uh, come inspect this and change it as needed. And you might have noticed I have a UV sterilizer here, which I don't use anymore because it only sterilizes the solution at the point of contact, you know, which is right inside the unit. So only the water flowing through it gets sterilized. So you can still have growth inside your NFT trays, inside your tank, on the roots, and it'll do nothing for that because it's only uh, the original point so of the source is a sterilization method. On, on this side of the tank we have most of the equipment. The two pumps that pump the solutions around are these two guys here and uh, the larger one does the pumping through that filter and uh, goes out into the, all the various trays and such. The smaller filter just recirculates the solution in the tank and through this, these two tubes and into the chiller which sits right there and this way it agitates the water in the tank introduces new oxygen. I use a little Venturi uh, uh, device on the intake side so that way the, wa the air gets introduced, gets uh, mixed up in the impeller and then goes flows out through the chiller and back into the tank which creates really fine bubbles and removes the need for 
using a bubbler. Now you may have noticed that I've placed these pumps on the outside of the tank and the reason for that is so that way one is uh, it helps with keeping the tank cool since these pumps do heat up and it doesn't uh, add additional heat into the water at least not as much if they were sitting inside and also because it's much easier to swap them out in case you have a failure and need to repair one because they're easily accessible right there all you gotta do is turn off the valves on the intake and the output of the pump and then un un unscrew these uh, union joints and you can remove the pumps and this big pump here, since we're in the basement, we can't just drain down, we have to actually pump up. Uh, and this pump basically pumps, whenever I uh, want to drain the tank, I turn this pump on and it pumps the tank out. And then there's a little check valve to prevent the flow coming back into the tank. Now along with the, the actual refrigeration type chiller, I also have, and uh, this is what I used to use originally, and this is just sitting here still as a backup to the uh, the free refrigeration style chiller. This is a water to water heat exchanger. It's a tube style heat exchanger as opposed to a plate heat exchanger. And the, basically what I used to do is I would have cold water coming through the, ch the heat exchanger while the, sol the nutrient solution is going in the other tubes inside of the unit and that transfers the heat out of the nutrient solution into the cold water. And uh, I stopped using it because of the, all the waste, you know, it's pretty wasteful since you gotta have all the extra water flow. So instead I'm using just the refrigeration style nutrient chiller. I also am using a little um, coil hose with a sprayer on the end so that way I can clean the tank and have a you know, source of fresh water uh, right at the tank uh, to make it easier to hose off the, any kind of sediment and wash this out before uh, refilling the tank again. So it really comes in handy. And I use a reverse osmosis water by the way for my nutrient and it's the same stuff that goes into the sprayer here. Now on this side of the tank you can see that I have all my uh, sensors in here, you know, like in EC, pH and uh, ORP sensor. And then there's a little temperature sensor, stainless temperature sensor at the bottom of the tank. And those two soft foam intake filters are for the pumps to prevent any large chunks of stuff being sucked into the pump and plugging it up. Now when the uh, water that circulates through the chiller goes out, it goes out into this tube here. And with this tube, as you can see on the very bottom, I have a 90 degree elbow and another T on this side and what that does is it creates a bit of a mixing action of the tank and agitates the tank um, to mix the solution up well when the, the dosers inject the nutrient concentrates with, which happens through these little tubes. Alright so this is the board for all the gizmos. Some of them I don't even use so I gotta definitely clean this up. The first thing that you would see is the nutrient doser which is on the left here. Uh, and that's from uh, Grow House Automation, and I don't think they're in business any longer. But it still works really well, and I got this a few years ago when I got sick and tired of babysitting the nutrient and having to adjust the pH and EC all the time. So now I just use this guy, and it does the EC as well as pH up and down through those four peristaltic pumps. And um, I use the a two-part, I make my own nutrients as well as pH adjusters and I use a, a two-part nutrient solution, you know, A and a B, and then right now a pH up as well. Uh, I'll talk about how I make my nutrients in another video, but this is a, a 400 to 1 concentrate and this is a 200 to 1 concentrate, so they're very concentrated and you don't need to use very much of them in order to get the EC at the right level. And of course these little quarter inch tubes is what supplies the peristaltic pumps and it goes out into these tubes over here and I have them spaced separately apart. You know, nutrient A gets injected here, nutrient B here, and then the pH up and down one way all the way on the end here. 
and the reason for that is so that way once one gets injected there's enough distance and uh, agitation of the water for the second one and the rest of them to be injected without reacting at a concentrated level with each other I want them first to kind of disperse into the nutrient solution before uh, you know touching each other um, also have a secondary monitor for from Blue Lab for monitoring the AC temperature and uh, pH and I do that just so that way um, if you know so that way I have a second point and if, if one shows some numbers that are completely off from the other I'll know that something's going on I either gotta calibrate my pH probes or uh, you know change them out or something um, you know uh, this kinda gives you a second point of reference so that way you don't have to rely on just one and then this is the little ozone uh, generator that I use and I have a little uh, aquarium pump here which is turned all the way down and even closed off majority of the way with uh, with these two valves um, and basically that adds additional ozone into the tank provide the sterilization I used to use this Milwaukee orb controller but I have found that for, for whatever reason in my nutrient solution those orp sensors don't stay accurate for more longer than a day it just starts you know going climbing and climbing the millivolts and it tips out at something around 500 600 uh, millivolts which is not what I have the orp at in the in the tank which is usually around 350 to maybe 375 millivolts which is plenty uh, to sterilize pretty much everything with a contact time of a minute or so and because the sterilization happens in the water and the water is what circulates over the roots over the channels in the tank everything gets sterilized As unlike the UV sterilizer which only sterilizes the water at that point so once the water leaves from there it's no longer have it has any oxidative potential to you know sterilize anything else while with the ozone it remains in solution in the water which does a great job at sterilization um, next we have this uh, little ppm temp excuse me this um, co2 temperature and uh, humidity uh, monitor which I just use as another point of reference because I have a CO2 controller here which is currently not turned on for injecting additional CO2 into the atmosphere the level you see here right now that's just from me breathing in this room um, and I usually keep the CO2 at around a thousand ppm uh, which is more than enough um, for what I'm doing here then I guess I also have this temperature controller here and that's connected to this stainless steel temperature sensor on the bottom of the tank and that's another another point of, of um, measuring the temperature and I used to have that set up on the valve that uh, turns on that cold water for the heat exchanger that I talked about earlier so I'm not using this anymore since I'm using the the chiller down here alright so I turned on the aquarium pump and the pumps the, the circulating pumps so that we can see how this works and sounds while it's uh, in action uh, you can probably hear the air getting dis uh, basically agitated and uh, uh, broken down into small bubbles as if through the impeller blade and then they get spit out over here which you can't barely see them uh, because they're so tiny but if you look at carefully at the surface of the water you may be able to notice little tiny micro bubbles popping at the surface of the water. I don't know if you can see that or not. But that's basically how that system works. In fact, let me turn on the airflow a little bit so you can actually see it stream in in a little bit over here to at the bottom of that little. There you go. You see that? Those are little micro bubbles. And same from the side here that are broken down through that uh, Venturi injector and this is obviously way too much we don't need that much air it just uh, basically acts as a skim protein skimmer and brings all the solids to the surface which I don't really like because then you got a film on the edge of your tank so I have this turned down to have barely any flow 
which is still planning to saturate the, so the nutrient the solution um, with oxygen as well as introduce all the ozone that's needed.